don't have that stuff. They're still alive, like the Inuit or the Maasai. They're not dying, and they're not dying of constipation, right? obviously. So, uh, or anything else. So they're very healthy. So it's like, uh, okay. So it kind of makes sense, but it's just we get, you know, brainwashed with all these messages that are just constantly sent and pounded. You know, I don't know if you guys have seen a movie called They Live from the 1980s. You probably haven't. You're all young. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do a movie review on it. I think you guys watch it. It is. Okay. The reason it's a carnivore movie is because the message of the message, the message of the propaganda being put out. Basically, the, the, the thing is there's the, you know, so the world is kind of dystopian, but it's kind of like America is now, believe it or not. And these guys find these, these box of sunglasses. And if they put them on, they can see what the signs really say. If they take them off, mm -hmm. they can't. So they put it on and the signs says like, go to the beach and it says uh get married and multiply and other signs say obey and other signs say consume and then he looks at money like the guy has money in his hand it says this is your god on the money it's really a cool movie it's a, a john carpenter movie from the 80s so keep a lookout because i'm going to do a movie review on that pretty soon and it's i think it's a great um even though it's not carnivore diet it is carnivore mindset because once you take those glasses and put them on you can't unsee that's what i think so yeah I know it's a long discussion or long description, but uh, anyway, that's that's my deal. No, I love that. And you you brought up a bunch of great points. And um, number one, I love that you do movie re movie reviews. I think that's I don't know if everyone knows that about your channel, but that's that's super cool. Yeah. Um, and I, I love kind of extrapolating out the mindset of this way of eating and looking at that in a broader context, like because it really has affected the way I look at a lot of other different things and perhaps it went the other way around like maybe me having skepticism about other things in my life prior to my diet and health journey you know made me very skeptical of the medical and, and health information that i was receiving from people mm -hmm. so it's i i like that because i think i think that's very common in this community too it's like we're not just questioning things in our diet and health realm we're also looking at other areas of life too, and all areas of our lifestyle. So that's really cool. And I agree with the doctors. Um, I'm so grateful that there are continuing to be more and more, you know, medical professionals that are willing and courageous enough to come online and, and have channels and put their, their medical licenses on the line in many cases to talk about this way of eating. And there's so many great people to learn from now. And I do the same thing. I try to answer questions from my experience the best I can, especially if they're Re, you know, specifically related to gut issues, or I was struggling with energy and different things like that. Um, but if it's something I can't answer, it's like, I know pretty much the Rolodex of, of somebody yeah. to refer, refer you off to. And so that's the beautiful thing about the internet and people being able to connect <clears throat> from all over. Um, so thanks. Christy's here. Hi, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> You awesome. want to jump in and give your thoughts about just how, how to handle questions? What are things people ask you? And does it get confrontational? How do you yeah. how do you deal with questions yeah. about your diet? So I kind of, you know, I looked at your poll. Uh, the question I get most often is what about your cholesterol? Like, so how's your cholesterol? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I'm a lean mass hyper responder. So that's how my cholesterol is. <laughs> so that's that's a whole nother level of discussion, right? Because that's like on the forefront of sort of what's being discovered, you know, about cholesterol. It, it, it's all the studies that are going on right now. But if I just say to somebody, well, let me tell you, my LDL is over 400 <laughs> or whatever, you know, I am basically gonna, they think I'm going to die like in three seconds. Um, so that's a whole, gosh, it's a whole nother layer, right. Of explanation, and um, I'm not sure how convincing uh, I am with that. I mean, I can point them to Dave, Feld Dave Feldman, Nick Norwitz, you know, all of those studies. But I feel like that, like if that had been the first thing I had come in contact with, <laughs> I don't know if I would have believed it or taken that on board at all. Um, so, yes, I, I often think it's unfortunate, like for my doctor, I was hoping to be like, Hey, check me out. I'm, I've lost this weight. I feel so much better. And she was very skeptical. And then she saw my cholesterol numbers. Uh, yeah, she's, 
so I didn't convert her at all. She she pretty much is in the you know the boat of thinking that I'm damaging my health and um you know that's too bad. But I I, I get the cholesterol question most often. I'm also sometimes asked, how do I start? I've had several people ask me how they start. Um, but when they find out like what a carb is, like I had one lady ask me, so how many beans can I have? And I'm like, yeah, no beans, like none of the beans. <laughs> and she never did start. Um, I mean, we had like an hour conversation, right? Um, but during that conversation, that was one of the questions. Uh, I think she was of the thinking that it was going to be more all things in moderation um because that's what people are used to hearing right just all things in moderation just eat less so she thought i think she thought i was going to say you know less beans or something um so i just think it's it is hard for some people to get their mind around and even if i give them a here is how you start um it, it is kind of a leap for people and i think they really have to have a strong why you know, to, to push them over the line. Yeah. It can't just be like losing 13 pounds for summer. That's not a big enough line. It's not going <laughs> to happen. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's good stuff though. I, I just saw Dave, uh, <clears throat> Dave Sonye is one of my guys and he just posted that his wife was having a checkup with her doctor and tattled on him and told the doctor, <laughs> That he's on a carnivore diet, and the doctor told her that's a great diet, and his wife was shocked because <laughs> she doesn't yeah. like the fact that he's carnivore. It's great, and, and like, he's a lean oh, mass he hyper. Amazing, he's in great he, shape. He's also a lean mass hyper responder. He is. Yeah. So I is. wonder if the doctor knows that. <laughs> I wonder if she told him that. <laughs> Let us know, David. Let us know. <laughs> well, that's and, great. you know, if you look at Zoe Harkham, Zoe Harkham's a great resource for the cholesterol because she was talking yes. about, she had a video where she's talking about when someone asks her about well, how's your cholesterol, she'll say it's fine. And then they start saying, well, what about your, you know, your LDL and HDL? Well, that's not cholesterol. Those are nanolipids. Are we talking about nanolipids or cholesterol? Please clarify. And if you don't know the difference, you probably need to you check out of this conversation right now because I do, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that I know the difference, but I, the fact that she does, I was like, that's awesome. Just like totally put a doctor on his heels or her heels. Yeah. That is awesome. I yeah. Know, I, feel, I interviewed her, but I feel like I need to watch her videos a few more times to yeah. like really, so that I can really know it so I can say it. She's brilliant. You know? Yeah. She's brilliant. You know, I was, uh, I just wanted to say, share something. So I just remembered, you know, you, Nia, you were talking about how like, you know, people in your, your current circle, people in your life, you don't really have too much backlash. And then I was like, you know, I think, I think it was only real at my mom. And then most people were just like, okay, do what makes you happy. But then I remembered these, this chain of emails that I had gotten from, um, my sister's father, who is a doctor and he was, he wrote this whole email talking about how I don't think this is healthy for you. And I was just sending him studies and talking about how like, you know, in Hong Kong, they eat more meat per capita than anybody else in the world. And they have, they have long, the long, some of the longest lifespans. And you know, he said to me, he said, Ellie, you're eating at a caloric deficit. Of course, you're going to feel better after you lose all of that weight. And the people in Hong Kong, there are two, it, there's too many different types of people that live there. It's not, you can't go off of that. And I was like, oh, it's just like talking to a brick wall. It was awful. I just remember that. I think I blocked it out a little bit. <laughs> it's hard. Did you say that was a, who was that? Was that an online comment or a, a person? No, it, it was a person in my life. It's that my sister's person. father. Okay. okay. My sister's father, who's a doctor, he emailed me. I guess she told my guess my sister was like, oh, you know, sissy's doing this diet. And it, he felt mm -hmm. that it was necessary to reach out to me via email. Long yeah. Email. Mm. Yeah. And I was listening today kind of on that that note to um, a, a conversation about cholesterol because I was kind of just brushing up because that's really, you know, what most of you voted for. And um sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, what, what are, what is it, you know, exactly. And what are all the beneficial functions and why do we need cholesterol? And that's kind of how I like to approach some of these questions is because I like by nature, I'm an arguer. Like I love to argue. I love to debate and I will like get into it with people. And I used to kind of be 
like rough and tough about it would be like, well, didn't you know this? And why would you think that? And don't you ever question this? And it's like, that never works. And so I, I've never convinced anyone um, by, by approaching it that way. And so what I've tried to do is shift it more to like, hey, let's understand like, what is cholesterol? Like, do we know what it is at its fundamental? Like, what are the functions? And that's what I love about um, a lot of the conversations I hear where like Dr. Barry will always bring this point up. Like there's an evolutionary reason for certain functions that we don't understand because we're looking at it in a modern context. So like um, I was listening to this conversation today with Dr. Barry and Dr. David Diamond about cholesterol. And it's like, he breaks down every single component of that. It's like, why do we need cholesterol? We need it to, um, you know, manufacture and keep in, intact the walls of every single cell in our body. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why we make cholesterol endogenously because we have to have it. It's involved in making hormones. It's involved in, you know, synthesizing vitamin D and like all these things that, we need to function and and affect the entire cascade of hormones. And so if one of those things is out of place or we are artificially lowering, lowering our cholesterol, that affects all these different things going on. And so you, you never really get that context. Mm -hmm. You know, usually in these types of conversations where people are like, oh, well, you're eating a bunch of eggs and, and saturated fat, like your cholesterol. It's like, yeah, but these are all like, number one, it's a completely different population of people we're talking about, a completely different context in the in the terms that like we're not eating the standard American diet, which is what all of these studies that they're thinking of are comparing it to, right? They're not comparing it to even ketogenic diets in most cases. They're comparing it to people that eat packaged lasagna and pizza and drink Coke and tons of alcohol and, you know, super sweet Starbucks coffees every day and all of these seed oils and all of the other junk. And so when you start to think about, okay, where is this person coming from with their understanding? It's like, number one, the references that they've probably been given aren't even in the right context as far as what we're talking about here. And then number two, do we even understand the opposite side of this argument, which is all of the things we need cholesterol for, the importance, like why would our body make it every single day, regardless of what we take in dietarily, if it was so bad, you know, and we needed all these drugs to keep it so low, you know, it doesn't make any sense just right off the bat. And so when you just start thinking critically about this and asking people questions, it's like, well, almost from a point like you don't know the answer where it's like, well, yeah, I've heard that, but I think don't doesn't cholesterol do some good or isn't there a point for cholesterol in the body and then see what they say, you know, and maybe they'll just think that it's like, well, I don't know. And then maybe the, even just planting that seed will go cause them to look that up and they may stumble across Dr. Barry or Dr. Chafee or Dr. David Diamond or Dave Feldman or any of these people um, who talk about this. And so that's kind of the way that I'm learning to curb my my passion in some when it sort of comes out in almost this like too aggressive way sometimes with people it's like can i get people curious how can i get somebody to think it was their idea you know what i mean to to look into this further and then obviously i think we've all talked about this in one form or another like just trying to model the behavior you know the behavior and and the way that we learn about things and showing our results is a is just a way to advertise without having to say anything. So that's kind of my, <clears throat> my two cents. I think the, the dietary <clears throat> cholesterol thing in 2015, it was published in time magazine and CNN had it that dietary cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. So yes. we can just say that and say, listen, yes, what I'm eating doesn't matter because my blood serum cholesterol is the only thing that matters. And this dietary, so eating eggs, just go look it up 2015. This is not me. This is, I think the American Heart Association came out with that. So it's no longer a nutrient of concern. So we can eat whatever we want. And that kind of puts that one. But you're right, Nia. You can't ever argue someone. There's there's those, those three hills that people defend to the death on dates that I go on. You know, one is diet. Uh, one is religion. The other is politics. You're not going to argue any one of those people into faith in any of those things. They sure. have to experience it. They have to get to a point where they want to change something has to drastically change their environment to where they're like wow maybe i need to look at this a different way and your your uh, approach is much better <clears throat> maybe asking questions like 
if they say, well, what about your, you know, you're eating these eggs, like Ellie, like, you know, he said, you're, you're eating this terrible food or whatever. You say, well, you know, have you seen the 2015 article yet? I'm just curious because I read it and it said I can eat basically eggs and not worry about cholesterol. So I don't know. Um, and maybe just educating him. That's like I try to do with my son where you'll, you'll be happy to know, Christy, I gave my son a homework assignment over spring break. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I yeah. told these guys this, but I, I basically gave gave him a, because he said he needed to in, in, introduce fiber to his diet because he was constipated. So I made him do, I made him do research on that. <laughs> and I sent him down the rabbit hole and now he's like, oh yeah, I, I was surprised. I'm like, okay, good. So you're learning something. But anyway. Yeah. So is he going to take a couple tablespoons of butter or some MCT oil then to fix that? I, I don't care. I, he, he knows the answer now. It's his decision. I said, you're, right. you're 14 now. You're making your own decision, son. Um, yep. I'm here to support you. As long as you're not hurting yourself in danger, putting yourself yep. in danger, I, I'm good with it. So that's, that's a but great yeah, I way think to Mia, handle that. I think, yeah, I think you're, uh, you're right on track with that is that you just need to. And that's, that's the hard thing. Um, I mean, how do you? Because a lot of times they are attacking us with their questions, right? It's really an attack. Just like Ellie, yours was. I mean, that was obviously like, mm -hmm. you're doing it wrong. I'm the doctor. I'm the, I'm the yep. authority here. You are not. And just like yeah, sending you, and you're like, okay, so how do you turn that back without being confrontational and still being loving and still being kind of a, a uh, educational friend, um, friendly way of doing it? Peak their interest, peak their curiosity, I guess. Well, the yeah, other- You gotta make them think it's their idea. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, like kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the other new information about cholesterol that that I think many people don't know is how uh, dynamic it is and how quickly it can change yep. and how like it doesn't take long and you can your numbers can be drastically wildly different. Yep. Um, in a very short order of time. So my mom was telling me because she's gone, you know, meat based keto, twenty grams of carbs less a day, and the heavy on the meat. And, um, you know, she has blood work coming up. And so I sent her, I forget the name of the video, but I sent her like a Dave Feldman video where he was talking about how he and his sister, um, what they did was they ate a whole bunch of saturated fat, like, like an insane amount of saturated fat. And if you do that for a few days, like three days before your blood work, like your LDL cholesterol will go down. <laughs> and then he had a bunch of people do the same as N equals ones. Like they just, they did it too. And then submitted their labs, you know, the results to him um, or Nick Norwitz with the Oreo cookies being a lean mass yeah. responder and adding in, you know, that source of glucose. And it doesn't matter what it, it can be a sweet potato, like a whole food like that, or it can be an Oreo cookie, but your LDL, if you're a lean mass hyper responder is going to drop like a stone and it's going to do it. He did that in just a couple of weeks um, by adding a hundred grams of carbs, um, you know, for two weeks and his LDL, I mean, just dropped. Um, so, you know, it's amazing how dynamic it is. People think that it's the cholesterol and it just slowly, you know, clogs up your arteries in this like slow march, but it, it, the, the cholesterol isn't clogging anything and right. it's very dynamic. Like it can change from day to day. Totally. Yeah. There's so much cholesterol is such a, it's fascinating. And the more I go back and, and continue to read about it and learn about it, the more I'm like, you know, we just need to take, take the hands off. You know what I mean? Like eat the proper food and just mm -hmm. stop worrying about these numbers. So it's almost like tracking kind of like we talked about last week where you can mm. almost get these dopamine hits, right? If you go and get good labs and you're like, I'm fine. Now I can just kind of coast till, you know, the next time I get my labs drawn and then deal with it then, right? Like it's, it's this set of numbers that, yeah, potentially can give you some information about what's going on. But we have to look in the broader context of, of like the whole body, the bigger picture. And I think that's one of the best ways to, that I've been able to reframe the cholesterol argument is like, well, what is it compared to your, like, what are your triglycerides? What are yeah. your, what's your HDL? What is your, what is your weight? You know, are you carrying a lot of excess fat? Do you have a lot of inflammation? Like, um, stress is a huge one. And like all these, these other things, um, contribute to your, you know, they're all risk factors for coronary artery disease or having a heart attack or something like that. And so it's not just LDL, <clears throat> excuse me, still dealing with allergies. They're getting better, but I feel like a stuffy 
drainy, drippy person still. Um, they're all like you have to look at this whole spectrum of different factors to truly assess your risk for something in a meaningful way. And that's going to be so individual depending on your health history and what you're dealing with and how far you've come. And so, you know, Dr. Baker always points out if you're concerned about a heart attack risk and heart disease risk, like go get a, cal a coronary calcium scan and see like how much plaque do you have built up in your arteries right now. And then, you know, as far as we know, there's nothing you can really do. Nothing that's been shown to to reduce that or take it away. Although we may see people have improvements the longer they eat, you know, this way. But, you know, it's the change over time in something like that where you can go and get yourself scanned again in a year or in two years and see like, okay, I haven't added anything to this. There's literally no more buildup happening so regardless of what your LDL might be or your total cholesterol or whatever, like if your triglycerides and your HDL are all in check and you're at a healthy weight and you're feeling great and your other hormones are, are fine, it's like that's probably not the concern that, you know, it doesn't have the weight that we've been historically told that it has. And so it's just like learning about all the different things that are going on in the body and how this way of eating improves so many other risk factors for you know, the thing that we're all, we all don't want to happen, right? The, the cancer diagnosis or the heart attack or whatever else it might be. And so again, that's kind of, that's kind of the way I look at it. Um, we, we had a yeah. uh, question at six, yes. 20, I put it in the private chat. So if you want to look okay. that up. Um, yeah. And the thing is like the, no other animals that eat meat get heart disease right and our body actually makes cholesterol cholesterol so bad for you why are we making it yeah. right that's the that's something it's a good question like why would our body create cholesterol why our brain made made of cholesterol on our cell walls why is everything made of cholesterol why is why are we creating it if it's so bad uh, and if you i've heard them people talk about the cholesterol being like the fire brigade right and the fire brigade shows up when there's problems. And that's why we have high cholesterol. Right. Oh, you have heart disease. Well, the heart disease is there from the other things we're eating. And the cholesterol is there to try to fight the inflammation. Uh, so, you know, why would we want to get rid of the fire brigade? You don't want to cut costs on the fire brigade. That's one thing. If you own a house, you want the fire brigade there. You want it next door. <laughs> so I, I think it, people just have to get a new look at what the fire brigade's like or what cholesterol's like and kind of get a different uh, conception on that. So. So this is a question. Um, I think this is the first one I saw scrolling yep, through. Sorry, I'm it. not um, super efficient at, at managing all the comments yet. So okay. if, if you guys see anything, yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't know if you can pull it up or if only I can, but anyway. I can't pull um, it up. Uh, I, okay. I, I, just, I just put it in the in the private comments, private chat. Okay, cool. Um, so Jasmine says, have you guys heard of people being, I'm guessing tryptophan deficient? Yeah, tryptophan, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, personally, no, I haven't come across anyone saying that. I don't, I don't know that I ever have been, um, but just, I mean, what do, what do y'all think? Have you heard anything? I have that? not heard about that. No. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know. I know church fan knocks me out on Thanksgiving when I eat some turkey. I'll tell you that. That's It'll what I was like. Uh, it's an amino <laughs> acid. Know, yeah. It's an, an amino acid, but yeah. Um, I don't know about deficiency. Because it's essential. So this means your body cannot produce it. You must get it from your diet. And right. so if you're eating a lot of meat, if you're eating a carnivore diet, you're you're more than likely getting sufficient. Um, that's kind of as a side note. That's kind of why I, when I was tracking for a while, I've taken about the last, I don't know, probably about a week off since we had our last discussion. Um, but about chronometer, it's kind of cool when you put your, your food in, it has little labels for all the micronutrients and everything in there. And so you can go in and see like, well, how much B12 did I get today? How much tryptophan did I get today? Like you could actually go and look if you are tracking or if you're curious, you know, if you're, if you're getting all of these things, but then we also have to talk about, you know, the RDA recommendations, right. And where did those mm -hmm. come from? And again, what context were those derived from? Like, were those actually healthy people, right. Or are they just the first, Mm -hmm. however many thousand people that come in every year and they take they take that average so it doesn't mean the people are healthy and it doesn't mean it's 
necessarily normal. It's just the average. And then we, you know, as far as like um, reference ranges go, but then, you know, what are these RDAs based on? They're based on a a diet in the context of eating carbohydrates and probably eating a lot of carbohydrates, which typically, I mean, we all know with anti-nutrients and, and different, um, even fiber and things like that can interfere with the absorption and assimilation of all these nutrients. So when we take all that stuff out and eat like the way we're eating, we just have more access and we don't need to consume as many of these things in general to probably get what our body needs. So... Just as a side, I looked up tryptophan um, contents of meats, and beef has the greatest, it looks like. Uh, oh, beef, good. cattle, dairy, uh, 326 milligrams per 148 grams of edible portion. So that's quite a bit. Um, and then chicken's next, then probably probably turkey's on par with chicken. They didn't have turkey in here. But, I mean, so out of all those meats, it looks like beef's probably your best. You're probably going to get a lot. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could do it. I figured I'd start just it. throwing some throwing some stuff up here. Um because I wanna wanna get y'all involved too. Um but yeah, how did it become a turkey thing with the tryptophan? I don't think I think <laughs> I think everybody just overdoes it on Thanksgiving and then they go into like a sugar coma and that's and then it was they had to blame something and they didn't want to blame the sugar. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was yeah, funny it though. During uh, Thanksgiving, this was the first year where I actually felt like, oh, I had too much tryptophan and I was actually tired after eating turkey. Mm. Whereas before I had never, you know, I mean, I had plates upon plates of food and felt drowsy, but I think I was just probably a little bit more sensitive. So that was interesting to me. Just so. So turkey does have a little more than, um, than uh, and so does tuna, actually. Tuna has oh. more tryptophan than uh, beef does. And, the, oh, the, and milk. A quart of milk has a huge amount hmm. of tryptophan in it. So, oh, that interesting. That makes sense, though. That makes sense to help Put you to like, sleep. kids sleep. Yeah, right. help mm -hmm. kids sleep. That's what they drink. Yeah. Well, warm milk. Yeah, warm milk if you yeah. can't sleep. Warm that's... milk. Mm -hmm. Or hot toddy. <laughs> and my grandma used to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, that's what I would always do. Like, I've had seasonal allergies in the last three states I moved to, and they've been pretty bad. And I don't, I've never been a big, medicine taker, even before I was concerned about my health, but so it always kind of like suffer through things. But, uh, I think when I lived in Arkansas, I would, I would drink like a hot toddy and it, I don't know. I was like, that just, that just works. You know what I mean? It just makes <laughs> you feel better and go to sleep. Um, but I'm not doing that right now. So <clears throat> I always find this interesting. Joey says we did the human diet in the seventies in my bodybuilding days. We didn't call mm -hmm. it carnivore, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. Rocky drinking raw eggs and milk yeah. and meat, right? I, I remember my understanding that all the bodybuilders back then ate very, very heavy yeah. meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. I'm eating raw eggs. I'm eating a dozen eggs a day for the last uh, four weeks now. Man, uh, you doubled me. I only ate six, Larry. I'm slacking. I've been eating a double. <laughs> well, today <laughs> I only have four. Over here. Today's the first day I'm cutting back. I'm going back to beef. But I've been okay. hitting the gym and my exercise, my workouts are epic. My waistline okay. dropped again. I bought new shorts and I'm going to get a new belt to tighten it up because it's crazy. I'm getting the V, the taper at, at 58 mm. years old. I'll be 58 May 4th. Awesome. And my carniversary is coming up on the 22nd of this month, my one year. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Congrats. Awesome. Thanks. We're having a uh, get together, a live meetup Saturday here in Georgetown, Texas. So if any viewers from your channels, that are in the, the Austin, Central Texas area, please feel free to come. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say, can... I've only had I only had four eggs today. I'm like, oh, maybe I need Great, to up that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I feel like, I feel like um, in the beginning of my carnivore journey, I was having issues with my skin and probably a little bit of like histamine issues. Uh, and so I cut off eggs for a while and now I feel like I can tolerate them. So I'm really happy. It's just a good, feel good breakfast. It's like, it I'm is. kind of normal again, you know, eggs are always associated with breakfast. So I felt, I find that to be a silly non-scale victory, but it's good to me. Dr. Cho, Dr. J Judy Cho is saying that a lot of people that have those histamine reactions, they do go away over time uh, if they're on carnivore yeah. for a while. So that's kind of cool. I didn't know that. I thought they just uh, had them forever. 
I need to watch more of Judy Cho because I just watched Judy. like one of her videos mm. yesterday or the day before because I've heard people talk about her and it's just not someone I've watched. But oh my gosh, yeah, I need to watch more of those. Fantastic. Yeah, apparently she has a great her, book as well. Mm. Yes, I, I have not read her. I'm so bad about re like physically reading books. But her, I've watched so many of her interviews and I mean, her story, what she went through, you know, uh, mental health wise and when she was nursing her her baby and like all that stuff like it brings me to tears every time I hear her tell that story and and now her transformation is incredible so yeah she's she's somebody I'd love to interview this year she's on my list of people I want to try to talk to because she I like how she takes a very I don't know if open-minded is the right word but like she she is so um, insisted about like, let's find the root cause. So like, if that's mold, you know what I mean? Like she's like her whole team now is working to really address, like, obviously we use carnivore as a, as a standard protocol to like get removed, you know, 99% of all the crap. But then, you know, she offers so many other different, um, functional, aspects of this like a, a gut healing protocol and and talking about SIRS and all these other things too that mm -hmm. if that could be a root cause of some of like maybe somebody like me you know it's like what is this is this mold is that may, making me allergic to everything like what is happening so um yeah I really like her approach too and and I love this there's so many so many more people out here now and coming from all different backgrounds and perspectives and with different specialties. And that's, that's so great so that people can find the help they need. Yeah. She kind of, uh, is kind of like the uh, house MD kind of the investigative reporter, like the one offs, yeah. like, why is this mm -hmm. not working for you? You're, it should work. So let's find out what is causing mm -hmm. it. And, and like you said, it could be mold. It could be some other thing like where her body's still healing. So that's not happening yet. So, I love that she does it like investigative stuff and then reports it like investigative reporting. It's really cool. Right. Yeah. I'm on her email list and she has great emails too. And they're very engaging and stuff. Um, this is cool. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm very lucky. My primary care physician who is a brand new doctor fully supports keto style diet. She saw my advanced lipid profile and she understood it. She said, wow, big and fluffy LDL. Yes. That's the crazy. healthy kind. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's what I have. And I don't think my doctor would understand it. I ordered that test myself just because I, and I know you can tell based on your HDL to triglyceride ratio and all of that. And you don't really need the particle density, but I got it anyways. And yes, big and fluffy, all the good things, but I, I don't, so, I mean, I have that information, but I didn't give it to her because I just think, you know, she wants me to retest and I'm just not, I'm just not doing that <laughs> because it's not going to change. I'm not eating Oreos <laughs> or fruit or sweet potatoes or bread or anything. Can you change other. doctors? So, yeah, I can. Doctor. I, I can. I can. I found a couple. I, there's a carnivore doctor. Um, a, you know, about 20 miles south of me. And there's a low carb doctor about 10 miles east of me. And I just need to call their offices. The problem is where I am, like nobody's taking new patients, but I do need to call their offices and see if they're taking new patients. Um, I just haven't done it. And I need to because it's like right now I don't need a doctor. So I think that's why I don't feel the urgency. But like if I need a doctor <laughs> right. for anything, I yeah, it'd be up. good to be like in, you know, in somebody's uh, practice and, you know, a patient, because I don't think because I'm sort of ignoring my doctor's, you know, orders at this point to get my blood rechecked. I don't know yeah. what she would do if I had something else like an acute something that I needed her for. So, yeah, I do need to do that, Larry. I do want to comment on this, um, Jasmine's comment, because this is something that I just went through and I have mm. found resolution from. And so this is just my personal experience, but um, I, so, um, and, and I think you're saying this from what you're seeing, it might be related to tryptophan deficiency, um, which I don't, I haven't explored that connection yet, but I have on my watch later playlist, I've been trying not to be on YouTube watching videos all day. So I've been building this watch later playlist. And then when I get to it, I go through the ones that I'm like, yes, I really wanted to. And I saw that same video that you're talking about pop up on life and DIY channel. Um, 
which I haven't watched yet. So I don't know what, what she says, but I, so I was carnivore about six months and then in January I went lion. And then in February I decided to add some things back in, but I was still not feeling great energy and I was really, really tired a lot. So I would go, I'd be like dragging tired, ready to go to bed at like eight, eight thirty. And then I'd be in bed until sometimes 7 a.m. still and not feeling rested. Like I was sleeping all night. I wasn't, I was waking up, but I would fall right back asleep. But I was just not feeling the energy. And so I thought maybe I haven't been eating enough fat. Maybe my protein's too high. Maybe I'm still not really fat adapted even after being carnivore this whole time because I've been either eating too much or my macros aren't right. So that's why I started tracking macros in February and I intentionally dropped my protein um, and upped my fat. And I, I go somewhere, my, my goal is somewhere around 1.2 grams of protein per kilo. Wait, is it kilogram? Yeah. Cause it's like 0.7 per pound, 0.7 to one per pound is somewhere in like the recommended range for protein. So that's where I was trying to shoot for and get high fat. And that's when I started waking up between one and 3 AM every single night without fail I was still going to bed at the same time, about 8, 8.30, because I was very tired and ready to go to sleep then. But I would wake up, couldn't go back to sleep. Or I would lay there for two, two and a half hours sometimes, couldn't go back to sleep. I do self-hypnosis. Sometimes that helped, but not always. I got magnesium spray, some, you know, a couple times that worked, but not always. And it was starting to drive me nuts. And people were saying, well, maybe you're just adapting and you don't need that much sleep anymore. But I was still feeling tired most days. Some days I'd, I'd be okay, but I was like, I don't think, I don't think this is right. So I did two things. Um, I like made it my mission to get 80 for 80% 80 of my calories from fat. And that is right around, I'm five foot four, 120, 100, between 120, 125 pounds. And then about one gram of protein per gram of, or pound of ideal body weight, which I calculated at 150 pounds, whatever. So the rest of that for my total caloric intake would be from fat. That's somewhere around 150 grams of fat per day for me, just to give you a ballpark. When I hit, when I started consistently hitting that 150 grams of fat per day and keeping my protein somewhere in that range, not too high, I started to sleep again. And I started staying up a little bit later at the same time. So I started going to bed around nine and then I was sleeping till about five and waking up sometimes four 30. And then I pushed it to about 10 and I was waking up, up around five between five and six. And so that's where I'm at right now. And I don't wake up. I haven't for like the last two weeks woken up at all. And I was, it was happening every single night, no matter what I ate, how much I ate the day before kind of thing. But it was my ratio and I've heard this, there's a video by, uh, she used to be carnivore yogi back in the day, but I think it's, uh, Sarah, Sarah Kleiner, I think wellness is her channel. She has a video out there that is her experience was the exact same thing. She had to go much, much, much higher fat to get her sleep and hormones back in check. And Dr. Elizabeth Bright is another person I would recommend checking out. She's a big, she talks a lot about iodine, which I also supplement and, you know, for potential thyroid issue and then which affects sleep and vice versa. And then so, so it's this weird hormone thing again, right? It's like we can't just talk about cholesterol without talking about a bunch of other things. We can't just really talk about sleep and serotonin or not serotonin, um, melatonin and cortisol and things like that without talking about the entire lifestyle and, and hormonal cascade. And so if I, and I'm just wanted to pull this one out here. Cause like, it sucks. It sucks when you can't sleep. It sucks when you wake up and then your mind starts racing. Like, why can't I sleep? And then I'm sitting here reading, which I shouldn't be on my phone. Like, why can't I sleep? Like, and I've noticed, I did a few live streams on this in the past and there's, there are people that this is happening to. And so we talked about that. There's a couple uh, videos on my channel, but I would check out Dr. Bright who talks about a high, high fat approach, especially for women and especially yeah. for hormonal hormonal regulation. And then, uh, Sarah Kleiner's channel has info on that too. So I hope, hope you get some Dr. help with that. Cause that's Dr. Bright's good. amazing. She's great. And she, uh, I send that to all the females that I talk to because I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm a guy. Yeah. I don't know. What do I know? You know, I just eat steak, mm -hmm. but 
but the thing is, I, I watched one of her videos. She said, if you want to visualize it, a simple way to do it is just a stick of butter and a pound of uh, ground beef. That's a good way to visualize. For me, I'm a very visual guy. If I can just go that, I'm like, okay, I get that. That's totally too easy. I can do that. So uh, I love the way that she does that. She's very straightforward in her approach in discussing, mm -hmm. like you said, how the hormones, all the hormones are made from cholesterol. So, you know, you can't, uh, men in low T, guess what? Eat eggs, cholesterol. I mean, just, you know, you need cholesterol. You need a lot of building blocks to make testosterone. So uh, I used to have low T, not anymore. It's pretty great. Uh, you know, I can tell you as an old guy, it's, it's pretty fun. So, um, you know, it's, it makes you feel young again. It just does. You get the growth hormone, all these things. Yeah. Dr. Bright's just amazing. Another one. There's so many brilliant people in this community. It's so hard for me to believe. And it's all free information. It's like getting a college, uh, education, you know, for free on YouTube with all these great professors. I love it. I say that all the time. I'm like, I feel like I have a degree just from <laughs> like the hundreds of hours of like, like free college level lectures. You yeah. Can do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really? yeah. All the info's out there, guys. Absolutely. I like low carb down under. That's a great mm -hmm. channel for all that kind yeah. of, that kind of knowledge. It is. Sure. Anybody have, oh, see, these, these hours go by so them. fast. Carbivore for 80 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Aren't where the rest of my days. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, we saw her on Lioness, didn't we, Ellie, mm -hmm. the other day? Hi, Thelma. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's why I was like, yeah, Thelma. Mm -hmm. That's great. We're all getting to know each other, too. We can support each other because there's a lot of naysayers out there. But, you, I mean, um, yeah, you had you had shared with me a comment that someone had written to you saying that the our, about our narrative. Should we talk a little bit about that before we go? I think that'd be funny. I'd like to hear yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's um and I brought it up cuz I've been so I had my, you know, my healing story. It was kind of one of the big first carnivore videos I made where it's like I just laid out my whole health history and everything I've tried and been through and how I got to carnivore. And I get 98% of the comments are supportive, you know, very nice, like I've been through the same thing. You're it's like you're speaking my story kind of thing. So, you know, again, these are in the the minority of comments. But I've noticed a few very similar ones popping up lately. And I thought, is this just me? Like, am I missing the point of this question? Because to me, it just sounds like it's it's not even making any sense. But uh, and so I, I put this screenshot in a post. So if anyone wants to read it specifically, but it's it's just from this person on that 45, 50 minute video of me sharing my entire story about everything. And they say, OK dot 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 but it's not carnivore and the philosophy behind it that healed that helped me in essence it was simply removing the foods that agitated your condition your <laughs> anecdotal story doesn't mean all vegetables are bad and the carnivore narrative is true it means you specifically found success by increasing your protein intake which that is not at all what i yeah. talked about by the way and reducing your fiber however this does not mean that all fiber is not good for you. In fact, fiber is arguably the most beneficial food group to consume, period. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting here wow. thinking, like, first Where off, do you, start? you know, okay, yeah. but it's not carnivore. Like, what's the definition of carnivore? It's yeah. removing all of the things that... <laughs> Ear that cause problems, like namely all plants, right? And then it is an elimination diet. Some people add things back in, right? And that's fine. Mm -hmm. If you figure out you can tolerate avocados, go for it. You know, I'm not going to beat anybody over the head with a club for adding things back in. And the philosophy behind it, it's like, that is the philosophy though. It's mm -hmm. like remove the things that cause the problem. And then you're left with a version of a proper human diet that is ancestral that has ancestral evidence to back it up that you can essentially live off of for the rest of your life and be in great health so like what what do you mean if that's not the philosophy like am i missing something or are they just angry that i said fiber is bad and if you have digestive problems for 15 years and nothing else has worked maybe you should try cutting out the fiber it works. Yeah. yeah, I have a story about fiber. So uh, ever since I was a teenager, I struggled with, uh, I call it, I like to call it chronic constipation. Um, it started 
it, I was known, and this is so embarrassing, but I was known as the girl who would clog all the toilets. And my mom would freak out, like, you clogged all the toilets. And she'd scream into the house. And, like, it was never, like, a question of, like, well, why is that, like, clogged in the toilets? Like, what is the problem? You know, I used to eat um, a varied diet as a kid. Um, obviously, I, there were some processed foods and stuff like that. But then as I became an adult and I became more health conscious, you know, I went to the doctor and they said to just eat more fiber. And so I was doing that. I was eating tons of, you know, I was doing, like, the low-fat, high um you know, higher carb, moderate pro or lower protein diet, standard American basically. And I, it, it became so much worse for me that I was, this is like horrible, but I would only go like once a month. Christy knows. She's like, oh yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I, I used to only go once a month or twice a month. And every time I would go, it was like five to six hours of like contraction, like labor pain. And I would have these like cycles of like running to the bathroom I'm not trying not to be too graphic, but you know, like yeah, that's good. basically filling, basically filling the toilet and then going and lying in pain for like an hour or two and then going and doing it again and then coming back and doing it again. And I lived like that for years and years and years. And then when I started keto, uh, you know, doing 20 carbs or less, it went away. Yeah. And then after I, I brought that food back in because my doctor told me that I needed to stop because I was pregnant and I listened to her, um, constipation came back and it was awful. It wasn't as bad as it was because I was more conscious about sugar and stuff like that. But then when I went to carnivore, like by the time I was doing carnivore had been like several years later and um, I was still kind of only going like maybe a little bit more like three, maybe once a week, but it was always painful and long and constipation, you know? And now that I'm on carnivore, it's like nothing. It's yeah. it's so, it's so easy. It's like, oh, I just sit here. I don't have to be on my phone and pray to God and wish that I could like get off, get out of this dungeon because that's how I felt my relationship was with, you know, going to the bathroom and, um, I'm regular and it feels great. And so I say, no, I don't think fiber is essential at all because that <clears throat> essential thing that you just said was nearly killing me. Like I probably should have gone to the hospital from being so impacted. Like I, but I just dealt with it for years because I just, I mean, that's a whole nother thing, but I just didn't care about myself to be honest. And I was just like, oh, it's just another thing, obesity, depression, whatever, you know, and just live with it. But you don't have to, if you suffer with that. And that's my poop story. That's you can't have a corner one. stream without poop being talked about. Well, fiber yeah. is just a non-digestible carbohydrate, yeah, and there right. is no essential carbohydrate. Therefore, we don't need it. But it's also right. not digestible, which means it's just <laughs> in it's garbage, right? It just goes straight into the toilet. You might as yep. well skip the step and just throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Don't I feel <laughs> stupid, right? <laughs> well, and, and people so will make the microbiome argument with that, right? They'll be like, yeah. well, yes. but you have to have this diverse microbiome yes, that feeds on this fiber to, you know, be healthy. And there again, it's like, well, based on what? Based yeah. on what information? Uh, so like I could find studies that say, I remember I got this question a long time back and you could go and type it, you know, um, like alpha diversity is the, the, the term that they, so it's like how many different major species of bacteria live in your gut. And there was actually a study that showed that people that had a higher alpha diversity, so a much more diverse microbiome had it correlated uh, with anxiety and some other mental health conditions. So like, I don't, you know, there, you can find studies that say you have to have this type of microbiome. And then there's, you can find some that say it's not good. So it's like, we're, we're going down that same path of like, we don't you, really know anything, you guys. You just, like, we don't know from this type of research. Like, so no. try it. You, you can know? just go. You can just go back to like I, I like the simple picture thing, like the pound of beef and the butter. So another simple picture is this: we're the only animal on the planet that eats a diverse diet. Think, name another one that eats a diverse diet on a regular basis. So we're probably not meant to, right? We just do it because it's entertainment. But really. Every other animal, you can put sheep and cattle on the same pasture and they eat different grass. They will not compete for the food. They will never eat each other's grass. That's just, it's amazing. And fish, fish don't eat wheat, so don't eat farm fish. Fish eat other fish. They're carnivores, right? Uh, lions, they eat animals. They don't eat 
leaves off trees. They it, so I think the whole diverse microbiome is probably what you need to eat a terrible diet that's of survival food that we're you know we're doing with potatoes and things, but not to eat a proper diet. I'm muted. Yeah, I agree. And I think, again, like that's such a new area of, of research and exploration. And I mean, we just don't, we don't know for sure. And so, um, yeah, I would go, I tend to go with the, as the simplest, an what is that Occam's razor? The, the simplest answer is usually at least the place to start. Right. And it, mm -hmm. it oftentimes is the correct answer. And so, and that's where a lot of this ancestral evidence comes in. It's like, well, look at what what would make sense? You know, we've, yes, we started out, um, you know, with a different digestive system, but we've evolved over the two and a half million years or so that we've had access to fire and tools. And, you know, we started scavenging and became meat eaters. We, we don't have the same digestive tract as, as plant, as herbivores, you know, we don't have this comparative anatomy thing. I know it's kind of getting uh, past the hour, so I don't want to keep anybody if, if you have to go, but I could go off on a, a tangent there. I suppose. I'll stay with you forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the ends um, of the earth. <laughs> how about y'all? You have to go. I can stay up okay. a little longer. Yeah. Okay. Do, do a few more minutes. If anybody has any questions yet, I didn't see any. Socks um, for Life just one. put one up. I mean, we yeah. kind of addressed mm -hmm. it earlier, but maybe they weren't watching. So this here? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm about to see a new holistic doctor for the first time. What should I say about the carnivore diet? I'm worried about conflicts, about possible increased cholesterol with labs. Um, yeah, that's kind. Of, we've commented on on this a little bit throughout throughout the talk, but I think, you know, it's it's a very nuanced thing, right? You kind of got to feel out the person that you're that you're sitting there with, and you know, perhaps they're kind of like Christie's doctor, right? And is a little bit more open to um, looking at some, or no, you said yours wasn't. Mine open. is, no, mine yours is like LDL all. is the you only thing was... I care about. And here's some, here, change your diet. And in three months right. we'll retest you. She wants to put me on a statin if it's still high, which is why okay. I'm not going to retest. It's still high and I'm not going to take the statin anyway. So yeah, <laughs> we're at a stalemate. Right. It was somebody mm -hmm. in here that was saying their doctor was open to, oh, and they identified the, the particle, different particle sizes as, mm -hmm. as good or something. So someone said, David. 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 So, yeah. Yes, that's right. Thank you. So, um, you know, you, you may have a provider who's very open to it. I know sometimes in the functional, functional, you know, holistic space, it's still mm -hmm. very plant-based and it's still very kind of anti-meat. And so you kind of have to just see who you're dealing with. And then, yeah, we've talked about some different strategies here and, and Dr. Barry talks about this as well. It's like, you can, you know, I might bring, come armed with some research perhaps, you know, about the, the specific things that you're concerned about and say, you know, not from an, I know more than you and I'm trying to one up you as the healthcare professional, but it's like, Hey, I, I read about this. What do you think? And just give it to them, you know, and say like, this is the newest research, you know, like, cause we're all supposed to be, as healthcare providers are supposed to be keeping up with the newest research. And so maybe they just haven't seen this stuff. And so being informed and ultimately it's your decision um, at the end of the day, and you can always find a new one if you don't like them. That's what I would say. Yeah. I think I just finished reading um, lies. My doctor told me, which is not a carnivore book. It's a keto book, but it was before he went carnivore, but it still addresses that really well about find, be, finding a doctor you can be partner with. So it's good to broach broach it early and find out what his thoughts are on it, for sure. If that's a new doctor, because you may want to start looking for another one right away if it's a major opposition situation, to find one that's at least worth willing to work with you um, on you know what your plans are and what you're doing. Yeah, I think that you're the boss when it comes to your own health, and you're paying them, to, yeah. and you, you would hope that they're doing a good job, and so. If they're, you know, obviously if they're concerned and stuff like that, I mean, we, you appreciate that, but if it's not going to work out, it's not going to work out. And so you just do your best to find someone who is willing to meet you at least halfway. But if not, you got to fire them like Christy did. Fire. Yeah, I, I'm in the process of, I'm just doing it in slow motion. I'm firing my doctor in slow motion, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't I don't get you. that luxury because I'm the VA, so I get what they give me. Yeah, I, mean, I can request. Absolutely but true. The odds of getting yeah. a VA doctor this carnivore is so far not great. Yeah, I like what Julia said. Um, she said, ask the doctor about ketogenic diets. That's more generalized than carnivore, and carnivore is just a form of a ketogenic diet. So that could be a good... Yeah, there it is. I think that's that's a really good advice. Good job. I agree, because <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of studies. And, you know, um, again, like Dr. Barry, I know, is somebody who always... Anytime he has a video about something where he he cites a specific paper, he will leave the link so that we can, yeah. you know, read it for ourselves, number one, and download that and print it and take it to our provider and just say, hey, what do you think about this? Or, you know, just to kind of open up the conversation, because it can be hard to remember everything and kind of know what to say and stuff. So I feel like that's, if it was me, that's probably what I would do. I would just come armed with with papers and then I mean, I've actually done that in the past and gotten completely vetoed and kind of like they just literally <laughs> took it and tossed it to the side and was like, yeah, we're going to be doing this. And I was like, OK, it's the last time I'm coming here. <laughs> but um, sometimes, you know, so do what you can. But at the end of the day, we all we all decide what we're going to put in our bodies. And if you know, if you want to. Um, I guess. I had like five thoughts at the same time there. <laughs> I haven't found a physician that I personally want to, you know, I haven't been to a primary care doctor in a long time and I would like to have one. Um, I'd like to have a partner, you know, who I can work with to get some labs done and, you know, just check on things from time to time. But where do you start? I don't know. Sometimes. So, well, I think that was a really good conversation. I think we hit a lot of a lot of good points. Hopefully, that was helpful yeah. for for everybody. And um, of course, the replay is going to be available if you're you know jumped in late or had a question, and um, you know we didn't have time to to get to it today. And I will leave a link to everybody who was in here tonight. Their channels in the description. So make sure to go subscribe. Um, like I said, we all we all come from slightly different backgrounds and have different experiences. So it's it's really cool that we can all share, you know, our stories and then come together to try to try to help. So it's it's whatever you're dealing with, there's probably somebody out there in this space who has a similar story um, to to help support you. So um, thanks for everybody who was in here live, and of course, if you're watching the replay and for participating with your comments and questions. And like I said, go subscribe to everyone's channel. And um, let's see, I think, yeah, everybody's name pops up here. Hey, uh, go ahead. Just a real quick one on your uh, your search for doctors. Uh, there's a website called Diagnosis Diet from the author of Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind, uh, Gloria mm -hmm. Ede or Georgia Ede? Georgia Ede. Georgia. Yeah. And she has a clinician directory. And if you go there, you see Judy Cho in Austin. You see, you know, I'm looking at Texas right now. Holly Kirby in Georgia, Texas. Yeah, they have a Judy's clinician. Judy's in Austin? Yeah, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, she's right here in Austin. So, um, You're kidding I mean, me. Diagnosis Diet, um, they have a directory. So if you go to diagnosisdiet.com and look up cl clinician directory, you can look up your state. You can look up, and then you can find a doctor that is carnivore friendly. So definitely that's a place to check it out. They're putting together a great database. That's cool because I've I've come across a bunch of other ones and I have never found anything helpful. You know, they say, oh, carnivore, keto doctors. And so thank you, well, Ellie, too, for putting that down there because uh, I can't believe I didn't know Judy Cho was in Austin. See, here, I love I'll Texas more and more every day. <laughs> I'm, I'm sharing the screen. So there she is right there. Austin, okay. Texas, USA. Nutritional huh. therapist, food addiction specialist, peer specialist. But there's all kinds of people here in Texas. You can see Plano, Gunter. Well, I guess that's it. There's not that many. <laughs> well, that's more than I've come across. Yeah, yeah. Even remotely yeah. close to me before. So thank you. But anyway, awesome. check that website out. Uh, maybe you okay. can find or maybe Christy, you can find someone close by. Yeah, I'll check. I did check one of the websites. That's where I found the the I don't know, low carb one. And I forget okay. which website it was though. 
wasn't that one. So I'll go check that one. And then um, yeah. the other one was like on a Facebook message board. Somebody asked like, hey, does anyone know of a, any doctors that would be friendly to the carnivore diet? Like I didn't ask it. There's some other carnivore around here asking it. Nice. And then they answered. So that it was like an answer that was, I'm like, oh, I got to like maybe call their office. <laughs> That's they awesome. said, he'll just tell you to eat meat and drink milk. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. There it is. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Diagnosis. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Ellie. Well, thanks you all so much. Oh. This was really fun. That and fun. thanks, Nia. Uh, who knows who will be in next week? I hope hope you all will join again next week and we'll drop a new poll soon so we can get, get your guys' feedback. And uh, thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, I'll try. I'll see you. Bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.